Where do you go in New York when you need to buy eggs, milk, or a hot sandwich? The Bodega, a New York City institution. Bodegas are literally everywhere in New York. And yes, while some people think of them as just grocery stores, you can actually get a whole lot more. Si tú quieres un bacon and get cheese, tú sabes que una bodega así lo puedes encontrar. Seguro. Bodegas are owned by different ethnic groups like Puerto Ricans, Yemenis, and Egyptians. But the majority of bodegas are owned by one community in particular, Dominican Americans. That business came to uh, fulfill that vacuum that uh, was there in, in, the, in the community. Decades of immigration to the U.S. have made New York's Dominican diaspora the largest in the world outside of the Dominican capital, Santo Domingo. This immigration to the U.S. has gifted us with Cardi B, Juno Diaz, David Ortiz, Oscar de la Renta, and the Kid Miro, who actually has a podcast called The Bodega Boys. Hey guys, I'm Daniel, and today I want to explore how bodegas became so essential to New York life, and also how the story of Dominican immigration to the U.S. was instrumental in making it happen. We spoke to Dorky Gomez, owner of Gold Glove Deli and Grocery. She's owned her bodega in New York's Washington Heights neighborhood for over a year and is known as a friendly face to her customers. Cuando una persona viene de, del, del patio, como le decimos nosotros, de la República Dominicana, con pocos días uno puede hablar con esa persona, decirle, darle motivación a esa persona de que todos los comienzos son difíciles. In her bodega, you can find a wide variety of products. La bodega tiene un poco de todo. Tiene área de higiene personal, eh, farmacia, comida, bebida. Cosas dominicanas tenemos nosotros aquí. Gomez immigrated to the U.S. from the Dominican Republic, or DR, in 2016. Her older brother, Carlos, is a Major League Baseball player with the Tampa Bay Rays and helped her establish her bodega. Fue un poquito difícil, como todos los comienzos son bien difíciles. Y hay que tener un trabajo constante, pero sí se logró. Gomez and her family live in the building. She works hard to support her husband and one-year-old son. She says that even though Dominicans are far from their homeland, bodegas help them feel closer to one another. Estoy cansada. Oh, pero ya se está acabando tu día, ¿sí o no? El trabajo de una madre nunca termina. Gomez's store looks like your typical bodega. For starters, there's a yellow and red sign and you can usually buy loteria or a lottery ticket at the counter. You'll probably spot a candle or veladora painted with religious imagery somewhere in the shop. And you'll probably see a bodega cat roaming around or asleep in the middle of the floor. And in case you didn't know, bodega cats are a big deal. There are Instagram and Twitter accounts and Facebook pages. And bodega cats are so iconic that this New York lottery even used them in their commercial. Good night, Cyrus. From somebody's Super cute. Okay, so while Dominicans like Gomez have dominated the bodega scene in New York for decades, the bodega story didn't exactly start with them. Jewish delis that sold a whole range of products were a common scene across New York starting in the 1920s, familiarizing the city with the concept of corner stores. But it was in the 1940s and 50s that bodegas as we know them today first became a part of New York's social fabric. Initially, they were established by Puerto Ricans who moved to New York post-World War II from the U.S. island territory. And that's something that Professor Ramon Hernandez argues is often lost in the conversation about bodegas. Dominicans bought bodegas, the bodegas, from Puerto Rican owners who were leaving New York City as Dominicans were coming in. So they were the one working in the bodegas for Puerto Ricans when the transition uh, happened. During the same time, the DR was experiencing some major political and economic upheaval. For starters, the Dominican Republic's U.S.-backed dictator, Rafael Trujillo, was assassinated in 1961. The uh, assassination of Trujillo led to successive events interrelated in provoking the exodus of the Dominican people. In 1962, the country voted for its first freely elected president, Juan Bosch, but his pro-Castro sentiments angered the U.S. and part of the Dominican government. We need to remember the Cuban Revolution has just taken place a few years before. It wasn't the best idea to have another country in the Caribbean or even in America Latina with a similar system. This led to a military coup and the installation of the U.S.-backed Joaquin Balaguer as president. But all of this upheaval created huge unrest, prompting a civil war. 
And then in 1965, the U.S. invaded. It was Dominicans fighting Dominicans, and now this is 1965. And the U.S. gets involved, and now it becomes Dominicans fighting the U.S. This turmoil left Dominicans seeking both safety and economic security. So in an effort to win hearts and minds, the U.S. government made it easier for Dominicans to settle here. Reasons uh, for that massive migration have to do with the economic conditions of the Dominican migrants in, La, in the Dominican Republic. And for the Dominicans immigrating to the U.S., bodegas made practical sense. These are small businesses that allow Dominicans to have a job and at the same time provide for their family. And this, in many instances, were created because they were not able to find jobs in the larger economy, in the larger society. But at the same time, it also represents independence. There were several waves of Dominican immigration since then. Today, they are the fifth largest Latino group in the country, with more than 600,000 Dominicans in New York alone. In New York, the Washington Heights neighborhood is the heart of the Dominican community. In the past, this neighborhood was home to Irish immigrants and European Jews. Then in the 60s and 70s, Dominicans moved in. They eventually became the majority, establishing one of the most recognized ethnic enclaves in New York. Washington Heights has this immigrant tradition already. So the other thing is that Washington Heights is very close to El Barrio, which is a settlement, a neighborhood populated at that time predominantly by Puerto Ricans. And one thing that we know is that Dominicans move in the U.S. or tend to live in areas where you also find Puerto Ricans. Walking through Washington Heights, you'll see Dominican restaurants and beauty salons. You'll also hear bachata, merengue, and dembo. And of course, lots and lots of bodegas. The bodega, it is this place that serves at the same time as a social space where Dominicans converge. Personas que vienen a consumir a las bodegas dominicanas, si se sienten eh, más o menos identificados, se sienten un poco cómodos porque consiguen lo que quieren. But bodegas are much more than corner stores where you get your diapers or plátanos. It's a place where the community gathers to hang out and grab a bite. Bodegas are also a resource for low-income and immigrant communities. They often serve areas where you won't find a supermarket. And bodegas often act as lifelines for many neighborhoods in the city by letting customers who are short on cash pay for their items later. Everybody tries to help everybody. People come and they're, they're short or they, they need a certain item and they don't have the money uh, at the time, then we'll do our best to accommodate them. And this is why bodegas are so special. They allow for a relationship between the bodegueros and their clients. For a bodega owner, Candido Arcángel, that means that his store is much more than that. Arcángel houses homeless folks in the basement of his bodega and has done so for years. Venían acá y venían con hambre. Si vienen así, hay que darle que no tienen nada. Despite his bodega being zoned strictly for commercial use and not having the proper permits to house individuals, he's taken it upon himself to provide shelter for them. Ellos quedan aquí conmigo, yo voy a luchar con ellos. Vamos a estar aquí. Yo voy a estar con ellos. Arcángel immigrated from the DR to the U.S. in 1989. He bought his bodega in 1995 and began taking in homeless people shortly after. William Arroyo has lived in the basement of Arcángel's bodega for five years. Talk to him, listen, can you give me thing one day here? And that's his story. You know, he's a great person, very great person. And sure, bodegas can be profitable, but they also struggle with challenges that so many businesses in big cities in the U.S. face today. Rising costs and gentrification. In 2015, an estimated 75 bodegas shut down in New York because of rent increases. According to the Real Estate Board of New York, rents went up over a third from 2004 to 2014. And while that's a small number of the estimated 12,000 bodegas scattered across New York, it's hit the industry pretty hard, not to mention the community in Washington Heights. Gentrification has definitely impacted the Dominican people. Affluent people have discovered the great location of Washington Heights. That's what it is. It is, an, it is an incredible location. Despite the difficulties bodegas have faced in recent years, the community is still very proud of its heritage and contributions to the United States. And Dominicans are much more than their bodegas. Being able to contribute and produce in the society where we now live, but more than that, preserve a legacy, a cultural legacy, a historical legacy right here, and share it with the rest of society. Entonces yo creo que es una forma de nosotros decir presente de que nuestra República Dominicana 
Te siento también orgullosa de que los latinos venimos a trabajar bien duro y honradamente aquí a este país. Hey guys, over the next couple of weeks we're going to take a close look at diasporas in the U.S. Who do you think we should cover next? Please let us know in the comments and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.